Okay, so good afternoon everyone or good evening, good morning, even if there's anybody listening in from the Asia Pacific area, we have a, a real treat for you all today. My name is Kristen Polis and I manage Belden's industrial cybersecurity business. I'll be acting as your moderator today. We are joined by two industry powerhouses who I'll introduce in a moment to talk about a recently announced partnership between Belden and Clarity and what that means for you as you look to protect your industrial operations. The partnership executes on and provides for a comprehensive solution, one we've been referring to as a one plus one equals three solution designed for shop floor to top floor visibility. Um, so um, just a, a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started here. Um, one, this webinar is being recorded um, and will be made available for viewing on demand for those of you who aren't able to stay on the whole time. And second, we do encourage you to ask questions of our panel. To do so, um, in the viewing console, you'll see an area to type your question. So when you're ready, type your question and press the send button, and we will get to those at the tail end of the presentation. Um, so before I pass it on to the experts, let me introduce them first. So we have um, in here first Drupad Trivedi. He's Belden's Chief Technology Officer and President of Tripwire. In these roles, Drupad leads products and services, especially focusing on the Internet of Things, cybersecurity, and cloud platforms. He's been with Belden since 2010 and also led the company's network solutions platform. And prior to joining, or as he joined Belden, um, Drupad was President of Trapeze Networks. Prior to joining, he was responsible for general management and corporate development roles at JDS Uniface. Next, we have Dave DeWalt, current chairman of Clarity, holding over 30 years of technology experience. Prior to joining Clarity, Dave has held a variety of roles, including chairman and CEO of FireEye, chairman of Mandiant, president and CEO at McAfee, and president and CEO of Documentum. Drupid, Dave, welcome. Uh, we're very excited to have you both here to speak to everyone. So I'll pass it to you both, starting with you, Drupid, for some company intros, and then we'll dive in to what's happening out there in the world of cybersecurity. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today with Dave, and we appreciate the time and opportunity to talk about an important topic. Uh, so briefly to introduce Belden, for those who don't know, Belden is a 100-year-old company or more than 100. Uh, we have been a provider of high-quality, mission-critical equipment to multiple markets. And within the industrial market specifically, developed a lot of expertise in discrete process, energy, and transportation verticals uh, through a range of products that include switches, firewalls, routers, uh, as well as software and cables and connectivity. Uh, as part of that mission, Belden has been engaged in understanding that customer marketplace, and we acquired Tripwire to bring enterprise class cybersecurity capability to this customer base as they were beginning to get more and more connected, uh, thereby increasing the need and importance of uh, cybersecurity for them. We have continued on the Tripwire side to also provide security compliance and IT operations solutions for on-prem and cloud environments, including things like DevOps. But uniquely, we have continued to take that cybersecurity capability and tailor it and adjust it to unique needs of the industrial market, which is more focused on reliability, availability, and ruggedness. Uh, and in that context, we are very excited and we'll hear more about our partnership with Clarity that helps to further enhance that for our customers. Uh, with that, I'll hand off to you, Dave, to talk a little bit and Great. review this credit. Tripit, thank you very much, and uh, greetings, everybody. Dave DeWalt's voice here, and uh, Kristen, thank you for having me. I'm excited to uh, be announcing the partnership here with Belden and Tripwire and Clarity and talking about the importance of industrial cybersecurity. You know, more on that in just a minute. Um, after 30 years of being in the high-tech space, uh, almost 20 years in cybersecurity, uh, I say this with all earnest, uh, industrial cybersecurity is one of the most important areas we uh, we have in the in the whole whole marketplace of cyber, uh, just in terms of um, of importance, uh, potential impact, uh, threats that we're seeing, 
and um, I'm really proud to be here announcing the, the partnership between Tripwire and Clarity. And I will say, um, you know, it's been an honor working with the Belden team, Tripwire team here, because um, I almost think of it as like one of the best kept secrets in all of cyber. You know, it has a tremendous history. I mean, it's not every day I get to announce a partnership with a company founded in 1902. So, um, you know, and it's a, a real a real success story. 10,000 employees globally take security. Uh, infrastructure important um, mission for them and uh, thank you for having me Drew Pitt. I really appreciate the time. Let me tell you a little bit about Clarity for a minute. Um, you can see on the slide here, um, relatively new company but, but very important um, mission that the company has had founded out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, Clarity uh, was born out of uh, an incubator called Team 8 and Team 8 was a series of um, uh, personnel that came out of the Israeli Defense Force 8200 unit, hence the name Team 8, and really uh, a company who um, is important for commercial defense because many of the operators of Team 8 and Clarity had a lot of offensive understanding of attacks that can occur in industrial networks. They understood the risk, the issues that were there and really um, you know, created a mission to protect those industrial networks from attacks and really make a, a reliable environment there. You can see the, the mission statement is very powerful. And in just a short period of time, Clarity's come a long way uh, of all the companies I've been involved with, probably the, uh, the fastest growing um, and uh, fastest to raise capital. And if you look at the investor syndicate on the left of the slide, uh, it really underscores the importance of this company. Uh, now over 100 employees, 50 plus in research and development, they've raised nearly 100 million of capital in a short period of time. And some of the uh, partners that you see there, not just Team 8 uh, in terms of funding it and incubating it, but you know, obviously Rockwell, Schneider, Siemens, you know, the partnership here with Belden, of course, uh, Bessemer being involved, Tomasic being involved, a real global syndicate of partners coming together to get behind an important technology area of being able to do deep packet inspection, analysis, prevention of threats in our industrial space. A lot of great partnerships. I'm looking forward to chatting with you a little bit about how, as Kristen said, one plus one equals three here and what we're doing with this company. But Clarity's come a long way. A lot of great customers now. Um, in almost every continent around the world, a lot of different vertical segments and uh, a real up and coming company to watch. Uh, Clarity uh, is the name. So with that, um, let me talk a little bit about what I think of as the perfect storm and I'll hand it over to Drew Pitt as well to talk about this. Um, for those who know me, perfect storm is sort of my analogy of life here in cyber, but whenever I see a confluence of vectors coming together um, you sort of create markets and that's really what's happened here in the industrial cybersecurity space, the ICS space. Uh, we've been watching the threat landscape elevate um, at a very rapid pace. Uh, many of you know the famous you know, Stuxnet-like example, nation states involved with multiple zero days to penetrate an air gap facility in Iran. But ultimately, this has given way to many, many actors having access to really what I think of as weaponry in the area of industrial cybersecurity. Um, most of the Five Eye nations all have you know, comprehensive capability and NATO nations, um, the famous four, as I like to call them, some of the adversaries to the US having a lot of capability. And many of you have seen the threat landscape elevate even with what I think of as uh, accidental attacks on industrial, most notably uh, the WannaCry and NotPetya attacks where targeted ransomware crosses over to OT or ICS networks and creates havoc and brings down companies. And I think that was really a wake up call for many companies because they thought they were air gapped and they weren't. And if you kind of look at the ICS insecurity by design on the left hand side, and Drupa can talk about this a lot, flat networks, lack of air gapping. Almost everybody thinks they have an air gap network until they actually look for it and they don't. And then you add on top of that authentication problems, single sign on, single user password kinds of things, very little encryption, you know, really ICS protocols and Modbus and DNP3 and others that are pretty well known and not very secure, um, very infrequent patching that goes along with this. And you add that to the threat landscape and here we are 
where the offense has a tremendous advantage over the defense and frankly why we're here today to talk to you about how we as two companies can close that gap on what the offensive capabilities can do. So Drupin, maybe comment too from your perspective as an expert on yep. this and maybe even comment on what ICS and OT are right, a little right. bit so everybody gets that. No, very good, thank you Dave. I think absolutely I do agree uh, that with everything in the industrial world being connected, uh, using technology not originally intended for that reason and an active threat landscape is, is a perfect confluence of vectors that make this a perfect storm. Uh, to your point, I would say, you know, we tend to think of uh, IT world pretty easily and people understand what that means. Uh, oftentimes you will hear us uh, say OT and what that really refers to is operational technologies. And uh, that is sort of a range of technologies within the industrial environment that includes uh, things as complex as running PLCs and DCS controls. Uh, but it could be as simple as human machine interfaces on the factory floor that by virtue of being connected are suddenly now susceptible. So the same notion of an IoT benefit that you derive from being able to see what is happening at a remote facility uh, also has a flip side of now exposing you to risk because of that connectivity. Uh, when we talk about ICS then within OT, uh, think of OT as sort of the analog of IT in that critical infrastructure space. Within that OT world, we talk of industrial control systems as specific applications. So for us, that could relate to something like how do you protect discrete manufacturing? How do you protect process manufacturing, uh, which is a little bit different and nuanced again? Uh, and similarly, transportation or energy. Uh, a couple of things I think Dave you alluded to which are interesting is a lot of these networks were originally designed using proprietary protocols uh, for a good reason because many of these industrial or ICS applications need to operate in real time. So even standard Ethernet the latency is too high for them to actually run that. So there was a good reason to be proprietary uh, but that has also therefore been decoupled from the larger world of IT developments around cybersecurity. And as that OT world is directly connected to IT, you see that more and more uh, as a need to revisit how do we protect and secure those? How do we get visibility into those? Uh, another dimension that is unique here in critical infrastructure is there is an intersection now of the digital and the physical world. And that creates a different level of risk uh, management, if you will. So cybersecurity goes from becoming an IT issue to one that becomes an enterprise risk issue. Because now in critical infrastructure, the potential damage from deliberate attack or an inadvertent attack through a misconfiguration is not limited to the digital domain itself you can actually cause physical damage and risk to life. So I think that has also changed the complexity and to your point around the perfect storm, uh, that only adds to the urgency uh, to deal with something that originally was viewed as being limited to credit card information and things like that to now where it can actually affect physical facilities in oil and gas refineries and and risk to real life. So, so it is a very serious issue. And as that, uh, all those vectors come together, I think we see more and more a need for that customer base to relate between somebody who understands their needs around reliability and availability as opposed to just bandwidth, uh, but then combining it with ways to uh, manage and understand their cybersecurity risk uh, in a way that that is navigable to them. Uh, an example of this, as you mentioned, this is uh, in a typical IT universe, you might say, well, you just do patching and you do updates every Tuesday, right? Like what's the big deal? In an OT universe with some of these ICS applications, it is actually impossible to do that without disrupting actual operations. And 
So what is unique about the opportunity is it requires cybersecurity companies to think differently about how do they solve these problems versus just applying what has worked in industries like financial services and retail, which are equally or more difficult in different ways, right? So I think that that to us is, is unique. And as you said before, uh, one of the reasons for us to look at Clarity was uh, we saw in them a partner that understood the unique needs of this environment uh, and was looking for solutions in a way that can be easily processed, understood, and uh, and run by uh, these kinds of environments and teams. So that that was an important element. So if I could add on, Drew, I think I think it's really important for the audience listening here and for every chief security officer around the world. I mean, I kind of think of the bottom line is it, the time is now. I mean, this is really important. We've watched attacks be effective. We've watched nearly every type of danger. Uh, that we see in our IT, IP world of protocols now exist in our OT world. And that's everything from espionage, stealing information out of controllers and industrial networks to hacktivism and ransomware types of attacks to destructive types of terroristic attacks. And we have to create a better defense mechanism against that because the threats are real and the visibility to the bottom line of this slide is, is poor. And there's no excuse now to have poor visibility. We have worked hard over the last 20 years to create visibility in other portions of our network. And as you're going to see here in just a second, the visibility in our ICS network, what assets you're running, what are they connected to, what types of security architecture do you have, is a significant problem. Most security professionals don't know what they have in their architecture, and that's not an excuse. So maybe talk a little bit about the boardroom for a minute, and I can add on to that too. Jeremy. Sure. No, thank you, Dave. So, so I think you know I alluded to this concept of uh, where cybersecurity was seen, uh, even in a lot of the IT world, as a as an IT issue where you wanted to make sure things were secure. Uh, to me, the nature of risk has changed with regards to the intersection between physical and digital worlds with regards to cybersecurity now being viewed as an enterprise risk management issue and not an IT issue. Uh, so we saw it with financial services, we saw it with retail, uh, but more and more we see uh, audit committees and boards uh, look at this as one of their major enterprise risk management topics. Uh, in the world of industrial cybersecurity, then it becomes an even bigger challenge uh, because as, as Dave said, traditionally there has not been a high amount of focus on visibility uh, or control there as these networks tended to be proprietary, standalone, uh, and literally not connected to anything else, right? Which in, in its own way made them very safe. Uh, and so as we see that connectivity, uh, increase and people look at trends like industrial IoT and the benefits they can get from it. There is an increased awareness. And I would say uh, the other phenomenon I think is interesting, Dave, is people talk about uh, OT versus IT, IT versus OT. And I think that's, that's, a, that's an odd question to me many times because what is common is everybody has a common interest of being secure. And if you can have that go all the way from your data to your plant to your supply chain, that's a great common goal, I think, that unites OT and IT. Uh, and if anything, I think uh, the onus is on all of us to continue to find better solutions that bridge those worlds while providing OT with features like reliability and availability as their most important criteria. Uh, and as we see more and more boards uh, uh, try to, first of all, understand the nature of the issue. Uh, second, understand what are the best practices. I think we will see an increasing awareness for standardizing some kinds of cybersecurity frameworks, methodologies, and tools that allow us to better uh, have visibility into these networks, understand the nature of risk, and find proactive and more responsive ways to address them. And Dave, you are you are on some boards yourself too, so you can talk to it from both sides. Yeah, I can't agree more with what you just said. Obviously, uh, sitting on large boards and many boards, public boards over the years, and also doing a lot of board advisory, you can see 
that the awareness is, is increasing, but it's not where it needs to be. And I really think we have to close the gap on the knowledge to the boardroom. And I just love the sort of, you know, protecting industrial operations from shop floor to top floor as kind of an analogy. We have to tie that together. The board has to understand the risk. They got to understand the potential outages. If you were in the boardroom of a few very well-documented companies got hit by ransomware, not Petya, and you had three to five days of outages and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue loss and costs, uh, let's say they're talking about it. And, you know, this is not a perfect polling, but I've been around quite a bit. I would estimate less than 50% of CISOs have responsibility for industrial cyber security control areas. Less than 25% actually have a budget for it. And it's distributed across manufacturing and different divisions. We have to unite that. And I think the chief security officers of every corporation, especially industrial corporations, should own the safety and security of these systems. That's kind of a call to action from the boardroom layer. Uh, we've got to do a better job of connecting security from shop floor to top floor and get everybody aware of what's going on. So spend a minute, Tristan, and talk a little bit about Belden's uh, suite of products, and I'll do the same with Clarity. Excellent, thanks. Uh, so I think, yeah, just to give people a high level feel, as I mentioned before, Belden has been around a long time. And uh, as Dave said, probably not as well known because of our unique focus on critical applications and mission critical uh, infrastructure. Uh, when we think of our industrial cybersecurity, uh, it's a range of products that goes from network security, uh, where we have uh, ingrained security in our development processes, as well as products that allow customers to start, uh, if they don't do anything, to start by just doing zoning or doing segmentation of the network or using firewalls, right? And uh, we think that the notion of having a network that is secure is fundamental to then having a cybersecurity strategy where you are extending that to also secure your endpoints and data uh, and access into that network. Uh, again, I think the notion of trying to think of network security as being different doesn't make sense because in the end, everything has to be together. Uh, when you look at Belden's industrial cybersecurity portfolio uh, with the tripwire uh, assets as well, uh, we can cover network security, which includes, of course, a uh, lot of products from our Hirschman, Garretcom, and Tofino brands, uh, to where Tripwire offers log management, vulnerability assessment, uh, change detection, and integrity monitoring. And what we found unique was uh, Tripwire as a company has been around a long time as well, uh, but the fundamental notion of secure configuration management and change control was very well aligned with the needs of the industrial customer base because they were looking for a very basic uh, no frills way of understanding what they have what were the configurations that mattered what was allowed what was not allowed and then they managed the differences from there on what is good or not good uh, this has translated really well and we continue to see uh, the connection points between all of these different cybersecurity attributes, uh, which are hard to really quantify into categories often. Uh, and, and we see this really as a continuity of things you must do. Uh, and I really part, I would say we'll come back to this concept, are part of a typical industrial customer's uh, journey on cybersecurity. So the way we would think about it, Dave, is if you don't do anything, at least do segmentation. If you do segmentation, then start doing vulnerability assessment and management of that and look at your log data. If you do all of that, you want to finally go actually secure your applications uh, like running through PLCs or DCS systems, you can get there too. Uh, but for many industrial customers, it's a journey to go from where they are today to continually becoming more secure. Uh, and given sort of the convergence of factors we said earlier, uh, with the increased connectivity, they are suddenly faced with having to do this very quickly. And typically their expertise is not in cybersecurity for the right reasons, right? Their expertise is in being really good at uptime and manufacturing and delivering things on time. Uh, so once again, we look at this as our ability to work 
with partners like Clarity allows us to go to these customers with a solution that helps them start that journey all the way through where they need to be depending on their own situation. And, and I think you'll see uh, our products, even though today, as I said, range from on-prem to cloud to DevOps, uh, we really look at it as the needs of this market are unique and we need to continue to tailor it and partner with uh, companies like Clarity that have clearly demonstrated their understanding of this unique marketplace as well. I always found, Drip, it. I was like said at the beginning, the best kept secret, you know, was Belden's industrial cybersecurity portfolio. But it's true when you sort of look at the slide that you're you're witnessing online here, you know, everything from firewalls and network access control capabilities, switches and routers, real infrastructure that allows what you said, most importantly, segment, make sure your air gap properly, your zone properly, really reduce the risk of a flat network and you have a lot of that capability all the way to all the log management and the data collection, the analytics components, the vulnerability management, the patching components, the remediation components, end-to-end -end solutions, um, all from the Tofino side, Hirschman side, Garicom side, Tripwire side, you have a, a really robust solution set. Congratulations building that. If you sort of think about clarity then, just maybe to complement and look at Clary's platform. It's a really sort of hand in glove scenario here with what Belden offers. Uh, you know, the primary capability Clarity has is what I think of as deep packet inspection of industrial protocols at the core. And when you really think about the solution that Clarity provides is we want to give you maximum visibility of the assets in these networks and do so at every layer of the network stack and really enable this continuous monitoring, continuous detection capability and response capability by being able to understand not just the protocol, but the context for which the commands are being sent. So if you have some sort of anomalous behavior that might be occurring between some SCADA piece of equipment and a PLC, we want to understand the context of that command compared against the baseline and look at an anomalous detection capability that really is unrivaled. For those of you who know me, I came from the FireEye world. Uh, we design solutions similar to what Clarity offers, deep packet inspection, look at anomalous behavior, very little false positives. Uh, Clarity is really known for having just about zero false positives. When it detects a threat, it's a threat. It throws off very little alerts other than true positives. And this is really where the power of the integration of both Clarity to the log center products from Tripwire is how do we really create detection and prevention to analytics and response all in one solution. But as you look at Clarity's platform, we want to put in a very passive detection. I emphasize the word passive. Um, Clarity's solution versus other solutions in the market we are passive. We do not put any technology, we don't ping actively any controllers. And what does that enable us to do? You know, it's much safer and more secure. We also don't tip off adversaries who might actually have an implant in a controller or an operating system. We're able to do threat hunting and monitoring in a much more secure way. And then I would add on top of that, it's, it's a very performance um, managed solution as well. Very little latency very powerful solution for emulating and managing threats across the stack by and built by some of the best in the business, the Israeli engineering team. I have a lot of uh, respect for them. One other comment I'd make Drupal, before I hand it back to you. Uh, one of the biggest attack vectors we see on these network areas is uh, an oldie but goodie called spear phishing. So spear phishing is, you know, if I can steal your username and, and password, you know, I'm able to uh, get a key logger into there. I can log in remotely to industrial equipment and perhaps do, uh, you know, some sort of damage. Uh, we built a product at Clarity that does secure, secure remote access. And I think this is really important because as everybody knows who's involved with this, um, the facilities are close in proximity in many cases and you have to remote access in and to do that more securely uh, is really what I think of as hygiene layer number one next to segmentation. So we offer solutions in that area, very comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. So maybe over to you to talk a little bit about the uh, the full suite together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, David, I would say you, you touched upon two or three factors that, that you know, highlight the 
nature of the fit for this market, right? One was uh, there is really a lot of noise generated by many of these solutions. And the fact that the Clarity solution is focused on really separating the signal from the noise uh, is very important for this customer base. Uh, second thing you said is you also have to do the monitoring in a non-interruptive way. And that is important from many points of view technically. Uh, and I think both those things also align well with our uh, focus on addressing the solution to a skill set that is able to deploy and run those uh, solutions. So I think uh, that, that, that clearly is tuned again to the needs of the market that are unique here. Uh, I think the next two or three slides are a visual to show people how uh, the Tripwire and Clarity solutions uh, work together to provide a much more comprehensive view. Uh, first, I think if you look at our Tripwire solutions today, uh, we work obviously with a lot of corporate IT uh, and CIOs, but when you look at the industrial world, uh, they typically go from level five down to level two uh, to monitor things up and through the industrial firewall. And we continue to see uh, that the levels below that uh, are getting more and more connected and we'll talk more about it uh, as we go further. Uh, but the Tripwire solution has been for the last three years continually adapted from a pure enterprise applications to where it is now relevant and applicable and used by our customers uh, interoperating with SCADA systems, uh, HMIs that are ruggedized and are typically a little different than uh, what you see in the corporate world, uh, as well as workstation and other endpoints. And the interesting point that not everyone may appreciate is oftentimes these human interfaces that are designed to allow you to configure and change things are the source uh, of cybersecurity issues, uh, whether they are intentional or unintentional, right? So having an ability to get your security through a complex router all the way down to securing the human machine interface uh, is very important in these kinds of applications. And uh, this shows you a visual of where we are. And as I said, the levels below that typically were not even connected. And many of those devices don't even have IP addresses, right? So, so it's a unique challenge on how do you create visibility, uh, look at the traffic that they are now generating on your network and what do you do with that? So I'll hand over to Dave to continue uh, expanding on that and this is what i said at the beginning of the call you know visibility is a problem in our ot networks and not understanding all the assets that uh, you have in your organization is uh, frankly you know problem number one and i think this is where the partnership can really help uh, clarity has capabilities uh, what i think of is the deepest and widest solution in the market uh, first the deepest when you think about being able to go to level two, one, and zero in terms of understanding assets and understanding the interdependencies of these assets is critical. And so as you think about your process network, your control network, and then all the way down to your field bus IO, you know, many cases you'll see interconnectivity between types of solutions here that create risk for an organization and understanding those assets and understanding potential I hate to call them back doors, but sort of doors that can be calling out the cloud solutions or remote access administrators. It's almost shocking to see how many of these assets actually have vulnerabilities that call out of the network to providers in ways that allow them to administer remotely or to patch remotely. So job number one is a very deep listening capability at all layers of traffic, all the way down to layer zero. The wide part that Clarity offers is the number of protocols that the corporation supports with its platform. I feel like it has the deepest and widest uh, capability here. Um, if you don't know the OT networks, there is, let's say, a lot of different protocols and a lot of modifications to existing protocols. Uh, very proud to say Clarity has nearly all major protocols supported, many uh, one-off controllers supported as well. Uh, we've now deployed this platform, as I mentioned, on six different continents, nine different verticals, and let's just say the permutations of protocols are getting well in excess of 100. 
And so having a wide set of protocols and a deep visibility really is powerful here to complement what Tripwire and Belden offer as, as well. And you can see that as we go to the next slide here, just the whole visibility between the two solutions uh, really gives you that from endpoints and network security that Tripwire offers all the way through the deep packet inspection and wide inspection that Clarity offers. And uh, maybe you can add yeah. on to this bit as well. Very good, thank you. So no, I think that's correct. I think if you look at the visual here, uh, you can see that the complementary nature of the solutions allow us to offer a much more comprehensive approach to our customers. Uh, and this, this actually allows also to do two things. One is, as you heard from Dave, uh, what is important in this uh, universe is to support a wide variety of existing infrastructure and protocols. And uh, just, just as he said, is the case with Clarity, uh, Belden as well, historically, we have supported a vast array of those uh, because that is really important to our customers who simply don't have the option of throwing everything out for brand new IT equipment, right? So I think that that is an important part. And if you look at this visual, a uh, lot of our customer specific solutions uh, support their existing infrastructure while allowing them to upgrade and update things at the right pace, uh, but not gating the idea of being secure only when you rip and replace everything. So I think that that's, that's an important element of this entire visual that as things get more connected and uh, the networks continue to evolve, uh, working in this framework allows us to do that. The second thing we talked a little bit about is when you look at a solution uh, that is so comprehensive, it begins to help our customer base also start thinking of how they are compliant with or in alignment with industry standards like IC or NIST that we think are critical to drive commonality and create the momentum to do something uh, about cybersecurity in these types of environments. So we think this is again, a good foundation to help our customers navigate a way through that versus simply giving them 15 different things to choose from every day. I think this is a great slide to stay on for just a moment as we talk about our partnership, because you know this is just the beginning between these two uh, organizations, in my opinion. Um, this slide will illustrate where where you'll see Clarity get deployed, typically at a spam port or mirrored port behind a switch that gives us this deep packet inspection capability passively. It allows us really in our first phase of real technical shipping product, any events that we see in the protocols and the deep packet inspection to be dropped into you know, the log management, the log center solution that Tripwire offers. And again, this gives us then ability to do machine learning and analytics on those events, uh, triage that across not just um, uh, our your corporation that's using it, but other corporations as well through the cloud solutions that Tripwire offers. So very powerful first level integration, which is robust event integration between the Clarity platform and that of the uh, of, of this complete solution from Tripwire, but we're not stopping there as well, which is nice. And then I'll let Drupit add on. The other part is we wanna get tighter and tighter with that switch. Um, and the better we get integrations there, perhaps even get into a single box solution over time, but also continuing to harden that switch with more and more intelligence between the two. Uh, this is the Hirschman switches that are out there. We're also looking at Tofino firewall type rule integrations that we can do. Uh, and then, of course, some of the other solutions as well for SCM management, patch management. So we have a great robust roadmap that I think will really, um, you know, create, I think, uh, maybe more than one plus one equals three, hopefully over time. Uh, do you want to comment a little bit more on the partnership here? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good, that's a good uh, point, Dave. And I think, as you said correctly, uh, the approach we have taken here is to create an integration level that's already in place that allows our customers to realize the benefit of seeing those events, collecting that data and, and, and responding to it. Uh, over time, we think this can get uh, more and more sophisticated, providing more value to our customers by integrating functionality within single boxes or putting quote unquote sensors within the devices and infrastructure uh, that is then able to 
watch, respond, and protect that environment without being intrusive or without even being detected that it's in place. So I think uh, we absolutely see that the initial integration gives our customers right away visibility into the OT environment uh, and brings together obviously the collective expertise and insights into that marketplace. But the roadmap and plan integrations will continue to deepen that connection and we think add more and more value to our customers. And in a strange way, that increasing sophistication will make it easier and easier for them to be secure, uh, not more and more complex. And last but not least, before we turn it over to Kristen for questions, um, the go-to-market is really important here too. Obviously, the companies are doing a lot of work on technical integrations and we have a lot more we wanna do. But really bringing together a community of experts um, is all part of it. Um, obviously, technology can only do so much, but all of the OT experts that you could you have in your organization, as well as what Clarity offers, you know, really brings together ways to share intelligence together. Uh, we can leverage our value-added reseller ecosystems together. We can begin to really account plan and work together as really, you know, one team to our joint clients. And we're committed to that across both companies. It's very exciting. So there's not just a technology component, but there's a real expertise and, and people component to it all as well. Christine, you want to take it away with a little housekeeping and then yeah. open up questions? Yes, yeah, thank you, Dave. Drip it. That was that was great. Um, before we take questions, for those of you looking for more information on both Belden and Clarity and the solution you heard today, we'd like to direct your attention to the URLs you see on the screen for the respective company websites. That's Belden.com and Clarity.com. And if you're interested in more information on the solution for tripwire industrial visibility, um, including just deeper information on that solution and a sign up form to get a demonstration, follow that link that's beginning with tripwire.com slash products on the screen and you can sign up for that. Um, so let's go ahead and, and take a look what uh, questions have come in, shall we? Um, let's, um, let's start out with this uh, first one here. Um, you um, referenced boards driving OT security action. So how are enterprises actually quantifying OT risk in order to justify that added security budget? Well, I think a number of ways, Kristen. I, I, you know, as I said earlier, I think first of all, there's a lack of education at the board levels to what is OT. That's what sort of I asked Drupal, can you explain OT and ICS in nomenclature that, that people can understand? And then number two, you know, we've got to get the board room educated on what the risk is. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're seeing threats that are creating outages in companies. And these are ones that are accidental in nature. Ones that are targeted could really cause damage. So when you start to think about how you quantify risk, you know, what's the cost of being down for three to five days? What's the cost of an industrial accident? What's the litigation and plaintiff action that could happen, the liability behind that? It's almost immeasurable. And when I look at those that are happening in the IT world, yep, you might have lost some intellectual property. Yes, you might have lost some credit cards or financial information, but let's just say things didn't blow up and we didn't have outages to these kinds of levels. So I think about the risk in a whole new level than I've thought about in my last 20 years in cyber. And I took that very seriously. So, you know, this is real stuff. This is real activity that we're seeing in the marketplace. And, you know, obviously um, we've got to do everything we can, including this webinar here to educate. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's absolutely right, Dave. And I think the interesting equivalent thing that we have found is in many ways, cybersecurity in the OT world is a little bit like safety, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about safety in a factory setting, you don't really worry about what is your ROI on that investment, right? You have to be safe. And I think increasingly in that industrial context, safety and cybersecurity are pretty synonymous and they'll become more and more so, right? So I think we have to think of education. We have to think of uh, safety as sort of an equivalence here in this environment. I'll just add on for a second. Um, I don't know how many of you follow this, but uh, being involved with Mandian for many years, they put out a report the other day you know, obviously about the Triton attacks that happened to some of the uh, um, equipment, the PLC equipment, Schneider equipment in this case, and 
they actually showed the attackers and the view from the attacker side and almost the factories that are being created to create weaponry in these areas. So obviously, you know, the visual of seeing nation states building attack kits and weaponry in the areas of industrial, you know, puts a little chill in your mind and, uh, you know, makes it real, real. So, you know, it's a big risk. Next question, Chris. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, so there are a lot of um, asset detection suites out there today. So um, if one of you or you both could explain what really sets this one apart from the rest of them. I can go first. You know, obviously, um, you know, I, I kind of think about all cybersecurity risk, starting with visibility, as we mentioned, um, knowing your assets and knowing the state of vulnerability of those assets is job one. And I think in most parts of the IT networks, we know our assets reasonably well. We have a CMDB or some sort of uh, asset repository that's keeping track of those assets and you're using vulnerability management tools, configuration management tools in the IT world to track and patch and do that on a regular basis. We've gotten better and better at response. You think about the OT world, do you know your assets? Do you understand the vulnerabilities those assets have? Many cases haven't been patched in years potentially and the vulnerabilities aren't that well known. And for what Drupal talked about earlier, safety sort of gets in front of sometimes security in cases and patch management is behind. So in this particular case, understanding layer five to layer zero, every asset, how they communicate, how they coordinate is job one and then match it to the vulnerabilities and then match it to the threats and then monitor it. That's asset management to me. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. And I think Chris, what is additionally unique about this, I would say is the level of customer insight and application know-how that the two parties bring to it. So as we said before, Belden is more than a hundred year old company. We have industrial customers who have been our customers for more than 50 years. And through that period, obviously we have developed very good understanding of what is important for their operations. What are their KPIs? Uh, what matters, what does not matter? And in a world where uh, Cybersecurity is often overrun with buzzwords and variety of solutions. Uh, having a trusted advisor that can help them make sense of what is important and why uh, is, is a differentiator, I think. And you heard uh, similarly from Dave that you know both our solutions try to address the unique needs of that market uh, while bringing a tremendous amount of credibility from the IT world and with the CIOs, right? So we are not, uh, we are building upon and leveraging that expertise and combining it with that market insight. Okay, and I think we've got just one more question here. Um, so, uh, and I think you've answered this uh, throughout the presentation, but let's cover it. Um, beyond visibility, what are some other important capabilities OT network managers might need to consider? Yeah, I'll start to put add on here, you know, it starts with visibility, as I mentioned, but you can't stop there. I mean, okay, so now I know what assets I have, but if you're not actively monitoring them and continuously monitoring them, you know, it's no good. So I kind of go to the next phase, which is, you know, know your assets, monitor those assets. And this is really where the combination of the partnership is important. This gives us continuous threat monitoring as a joint solution at every layer of the uh, stack. That's extremely important. And I go just one more layer. Um, it's great to know your assets. It's great to monitor those assets, but if you can't stop a threat, it's a real problem too. Because in many cases you have milliseconds to respond. This is an automated problem. If there's an implant or an issue or an outage that's occurring, you have to stop it. So prevention and response becomes key and being able to do that safely and securely is the utmost. And if you look at both these companies' history and you look at what they can do together, safe response, safe and secure response is another component of all of this that's really key and then ultimately mitigating that for future as well. Yeah, no, and I think that's absolutely right. I think in addition, you know, as I said at the outset, uh, it is sort of a misnomer to think of OT as being a different world than IT, right? It's just that it's a part that has unique requirements uh, that ultimately all work together. And and what we, I would say, continue to add on to that is, in addition to first knowing what do you have on your network, monitoring them for threats, responding to those threats. Uh, additionally, I think we think 
that the physical infrastructure itself continuing to become more secure by that combination uh, helps making you more and more secure and safe. And at the same time, I think the idea of understanding uh, what data you collect already from your operations and how do you best utilize that to be more and more secure uh, ties into some of the themes we said earlier about what we do with data collector and log management and uh, folding that back. So I think ultimately from an OT manager perspective, the way to think about it is cybersecurity threat is real, but there is real benefit to connectivity. How do you take advantage of that uh, by following uh, things that make sense to you without over overly being overly complex uh, to be more secure? And that that sort of what I mentioned before, as sort of we think of that as a customer cybersecurity journey, right? So I think it's totally appropriate to start from what do I have to then what do I do with it and how do I then interface it into my IT systems with my supply chain because all of those things make you more and more safe as you take incremental steps on that journey. Last comment maybe, and then we can wrap up here. You know, again, thank you for, for having Clarity a part of the partnership. I would really offer you to test the products and the products are ready. Um, they're very uh, easy to implement and get a test, a vulnerability assessment, a visibility assessment, uh, gives you a complete uh, picture of your OT networks uh, very painlessly. And um, I think it's responsible to do so. It's almost like a risk assessment, automated risk assessment. Go get that. If you're already a Tripwire customer, I invite you to integrate with Clarity. If you're already a Clarity customer, there's many integrations here, particularly the Log Center product to start. That's a great add-on to what we've got. So it's here and now, ready to go. And um, again, thanks for having us and uh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Thank Dave. That was great. Thank you, everyone.